Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I'm here to see Nick McMillan. Nick, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. So Nick is based here in his workshop in the county of Hampshire, which is in the south coast of England. Nick is a full-time professional craftsman and also an artist. He shares his workshop, workshop with his wife, who is also a professional craftswoman. Now what this video is, is a final instalment of a three-part series I'm filming with Nick. In the first video, we looked at a detailed process of Nick demonstrating how to harvest cedar bark for basketry and weaving. In the second video of this three-part series, Nick demonstrated how to process the cedar bark for weaving and basketry. And now in his final third installment of this three-part series, what Nick is going to be demonstrating is step-by-step -step how to actually weave a cedar bark basket. Two things, three things actually to mention. Number one, Nick has written a very detailed and comprehensive ebook that is only just published at the time of us filming, in which he documents in pristine detail the entire process around cedar bark basket tree. So think of it as an accompaniment to this series, but he actually goes into a lot more detail in the books, as well as a lot of custom illustrations that he's done himself. If you wish to find out more about the book and support Nick's work, I'll put a link below in the description and pin to the top of the comments. Number two, needless to say, I will be putting a link to Nick's social media and website. You can find a lot more about him. Once again, links below will be in the description and pinned to the top of the comments. And finally, links to the previous two videos in a three-part series will also be in the description below. I would highly recommend you watch those to understand where we're up to now because what Nick's gonna be using is the materials that were subsequently harvested and then process, he's using those principles to get to the stage with which he's gonna weave now. So there's gonna be a lot of things that make sense if you haven't seen the previous two videos to watch those. So once again, links to those will be down in the description. So in this video, what Nick is gonna be talking through is step by step how to weave a basket. What we're gonna do first is have a brief look at the myriad of baskets that Nick has made. So you can see kind of the quality of his work and what it is that he's done up until now. And then we'll get straight into the tutorial. So Nick, with your kind permission, we'll begin. Yeah, brilliant. Let's so do guys, it. hope you enjoyed the rest of this video where Nick McMillan is going to be demonstrating to you how to weave a cedar bark basket. So Nick, starting off from this side of the workshop, would you like to talk us through a little bit about the work that you've got on display here? Yeah, great. Um, so we'll start over here. Um, we've got a few different types of baskets. Um, it's a mix of my work, uh, a lot more of Molly's work over this side. Um, so down here, we've got a um, cedar bark canoe baler. Uh, so something that I touch on in my book. Uh, I've got sort of instructions on how to make it. Uh, this is what we call a folded basket. So this is taking a sheet of bark, folding it up, and then it's bound together with the cedar roots here across the handle. And it, um, this used to be used for bailing out canoes if uh, they sprung a leak and they needed to get back. Um, they would just knock one of these up and uh, yeah, away you go. I quite like them. I think they're sort of quite a nice little sort of tool truck. So I use them just for keeping me hand tools in. Um, some more cedar bark stuff. This is the sort of thing we're going to show in the tutorial, little bias weave baskets, various different sizes. Uh, then we've got a lot of Mole's kind of fiber work. She really likes experimenting with lots of different types of natural fibers. Uh, we've got some straw there. Um, up here, we've got uh, coiled, this is Mexican, um, some Mexican pine, really long pine needles. This is quite a funny, funny little thing. Um, We've got lime bark, we've got willow bark, cedar bark, I think crocosmia leaves, all sorts of stuff going on in there. Mole really likes, she'll just start making something with no end game and she'll just create. Um, I'm a planner, I can't handle that, I need to know where I'm going <laughs> myself, but you know, what fits all. And then again, more sort of like cedar, um, fiber bark fiber work, um, all different kind of materials that Mole likes mixing in. Um, some hedgerow basketry, that's a big thing of Mole's, she does a lot of teaching of that. More willow work, more hedgerow stuff. Some cedar stuff, that's another one that's in my book, I'll show you how to make that little basket. She's got a very um, traditional cedar bark border there, it's called lock, locked border, but that's very common on cedar work. Another cool little folded cedar bark basket so this was one sheet of bark 
nice um, just scrape the flakes off the outer bark there so and then that's sewn up with roots and then it's got a nice sort of braided rim that I've sort of sewn on again with more roots but that's quite a cool little little object little gathering basket more of Moles Willow work uh, sort of traditional shoppers more traditional kind of frame basket um, one of my sort of biggest cedar weavings um, yeah, I, I just went mad with this one. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of materials. Took me a long time to prep all the materials on that. Um, yeah, I'm really chuffed with that bit. And then we move around here, come up to a lot of Milo, uh, Molly's willow work here. She's been working a lot on these kind of hampers and uh, shopping baskets. Got another um, one of my mats, cedar bark mats. I think I did that one before that one. Um, yeah, I really like. I'd like to do more of these. And then we've got a couple of um, my sort of bigger cedar bark baskets. This is one of my favourite ones. Um, it's quite a big one. Some big elements in there, um, and nice to use. You know that sort of um, the black and the gold to create patterns. I really enjoy doing that. Um, yeah, and then sort of bound round with roots there and more roots there. A lot of harvesting for this stuff. Um, in here we've got a couple of my arrow quivers. Um, so this is quite a traditional arrow quiver. It's got the strap, so we've got a four strand plaited strap there with a big strap on the top for if your shoulder. All bound on with roots around the border. So that would have been very traditional. Um, this is my take on an arrow quiver. This is a belt quiver that I actually use when I go shooting. Just sits on the belt like that. Um, there was a, a version of this that um, won me the second place in the uh, basket of the year last year, 2021. Um, so yeah, I like making these, they're good fun. Um, but this has got a lot of different techniques in it. Um, it's a bit of a sampler. Got some three strand twining, some basic plaiting, more twining. Then we got some sort of twill weave, a bit of willow bark in there just for an accent. And then yeah, nice sort of um, sort of stitch and pinch border there with a little funky rim on it. So yeah, quite nice that. Like that one. And then we got um, a sort of double layer basket. This is probably the biggest basket I've made out of bark. Um, it's got a cedar bark outer and then it's got a chestnut bark inside just to act as a kind of the, the skeleton of the thing um, and then all bound on with hundreds of feet of roots I think I went mental with the roots on that one but, so yeah and then we come around here we've got all of Moll's willow that she has all sort of graded, sorted, ready to go for uh, her projects uh, then round here we've got Moll's um, coffins that she makes to order, uh, which are beautiful, beautiful things. She didn't get you to size it up, did she? Do you know, we actually had <laughs> one of these in our lounge for about three months. It was very strange. And you still never got the hint. Well, yeah, I thought it was my safe space. I'd go and uh, hide in there when I needed a bit of time out. Um, but yeah, no, they're <laughs> funny things to have knocking about. Um, and then yeah, some more little kind of cedar weaving um, sort of samplers really. I just did these as kind of uh, experiments in pattern and design, seeing what worked, what didn't work. Um, and then yeah, moving around, some pictures. And then all of, all of well, some of our kind of stuff. Lots of bark, loads of bark, loads of fibres, and loads of sort of baskets that don't make the grade really. So just a bit of a recap as to you know where we've got to. Um, we started off harvesting our raw material, our cedar bark off the tree. Uh, so we've got this and we've taken, we've removed that sort of flaky outer bark from it, which we did while the bark was still wet. This is still wet from where we've harvested it. Then what we do is we get the bark to dry fully. So it's nice, nice and completely dried, which is what we've got here. Um, once that's fully dried, you know, I'm using bark from last year, but you know, as long as the bark's fully dried, then we can move on to our next stage, which is sort of re-wetting it to make it supple enough to work with. So this bark has been 
moistened down, soaked in boiling hot water. You can see there it's nice and supple. Um, and we've run it through a bark cutter to get it to this sort of size. And again, we've peeled it in two to make our bark thinner from this thick stuff down to this nice, supple, thin stuff. Then what I've done is I've just prepared my weavers for the project, which is just taken from this stuff and I've just cut it to length. So these are cut to 15 inch or 38 centimeter lengths, which is gonna be enough to make our little bias weave basket here. So just to recap then, in the first video of the harvesting, we showed the different techniques for uh, taking it from the cedar tree yep. and subsequently then processing it down and then leaving it to dry. Yep. Then as in the second video, we then processed it down like you discussed with boiling it, uh, all the nuances with that, then obviously splitting them, etc., uh, and then subsequently getting to the stage here. Yeah. So now in this video, you're gonna demonstrate making this small basket here. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you've cut these into specific size strips. Yeah. So what I'd be right in saying, that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, just to kind of, one thing to touch on before you begin. Um, what I'll be right in saying, obviously we're, we're demonstrating a smaller basket here, simply due to time. Uh, but what I'd be right in assuming that all the principles still apply to a larger version of this Absolutely, basket. yeah. Um, I mean, this sort of bias weave basket is, you know, really common throughout the world. You, you probably, you, your people that are watching this are really familiar with this uh, through like birch bark. It's a very common birch bark basket. Uh, but you'll see it all through the world used, you know, palm leaf weaving, um, cedar bark, birch bark, you know, it's everywhere. It's a very good way of making a basket. Um, we're just doing a small one because of time. Um, and it, it's a good way to practice the techniques without using a lot of material. Okay. But once you've got these, uh, the basic um, principles that we're going to show you, you know, you can expand on this and make it bigger. Um, you know, I've made big ones of these, um, and yeah, you know, um, just bigger the better, yeah. So now to begin the process, where would you start? So, um, we've cut our weavers to half inch. We've cut them to length 15 inches or 38 centimeters. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, I've got 12 weavers. So I'm going to make a six by six mat, essentially. And to start with, I'm just gonna make sure everything is the right way around. Um, so when you say the right way around, what yeah. should be facing up, what should be facing well, down? Well, that, that's, I mean, it's up to you. You see this strip here, it's got a dark and a light side. So you can actually use that to create pattern. So you could alter it, so you have light, dark, light, dark, and that will give you a kind of checked pattern. Um, or you can have them all the same way round. Um, and then one side will be the outside of the basket, one side will be the inside. I tend to like this lighter side on the outside of my basket, it's just what I prefer. But you know, experiment again. You can create patterns and have a bit of creative fun with it. So I'm gonna start with two strips, horizontal. And I'm gonna get another two strips and come in vertical. I'm gonna weave these essentially under over, so it's over one, under the next one. Try and get them roughly in the middle. And then this one is going to do the opposite to that. So it's going to go over and under. So we end up with a little check weave like that in the middle. Now I want to just at this stage, it's quite important because we're using weavers of a certain size, just to make sure everything's central. So I want to be sort of seven and a half inches from the middle. So I'm just going to correct those. You know, it doesn't matter if you a little bit out, but do try and get them sort of pretty bang on. That's about right. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is just going to put another one in there, rotate it there, rotate it, and keep doing that until the, the mat grows. Um, I do it from the centre outward because it allows you to keep uh, the mat more square. If you start at one end and weave everything in, going sort of top to bottom, you'll end up with it longer and narrower, more of an oblong. But to keep things square, start in the middle and then just work out, spiraling round. So I'll show you that. So this one, we're gonna come in like this. So again, creating our under over opposite 
we've, I'm going to lay it over there, I'm just going to fold that back, lift this one up, let that drop, and then fold that back over. Okay, then I'm going to turn the whole weaving round and just do the same. So come in there, so he wants to go under this first one. over the middle and then under that one. Now you notice all the time that I'm weaving I'm trying to budge these all up so they're nice and tight together. Turn it around again. Come in with another weaver. So it's going under, over, under. Again. Under. Okay, so we've got a four by four mat. So we're just going to go around again. The last one's in. Now here I've got two weavers which are quite thick and you can see as I let that one drop down it wants to stay sticking up. If I just force that down eventually it's going to push this one up, okay, ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of push that down and then pull and fold that one over and you can see how it lies a lot flatter. This is going to help your basket just retain, um, stop getting loose and baggy when it dries. Just this, this, that simple little technique. So this one, push it down. I'm going to crease that down in there and then sort of just ever so slightly lift and fold it over. And it just allows everything to lie flatter and it's going to stay tight, nice tight weave. So under that one, over. And uh, just push it down, fold that up and over. And at this stage, you know, this bark is, it's been soaked for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. It's nice and supple. It gets a really nice leather quality to it. It goes really, really lovely to work with. See, it's got a bit of give in it, so you can crank it around a bit, tighten it up. Last one. Is it important then to get an even number on both? Yeah, that's a very good point, Zed. Um, with this bias weave, uh, it will become apparent on my next, the next bit that I show you, that you need to have an even number of weavers. They can, you can have a different amount going horizontal, than vertical, but as long as both numbers are even. Because what I'm going to do now is, I've got six and six, I'm going to come in with a mould, my block here, and it's basically going to sit diagonally over the weave like that, okay? And each of these points is between the third and fourth weaver on each side. Now, if you imagined having an odd number of weavers, that point is going to dissect one of these weavers. Okay. Because that is going to be this folded corner here. And we want these two weavers to kind of fold up and overlap each other. And you, it won't happen if you've got an odd number. So, yes, they can be any size, any number, as long as you've got an even number. Okay. So, before I fold my... Uh, my, my bark mat up. If you can imagine I'm folding across these diagonal lines, if I fold that up, these weavers are just going to want to come undone. 
okay? Which can be really frustrating. So a good little technique, good little cheat, is to just bind around the outside of our mat with some thread. So I'm just gonna run some thread out here. Make sure you do enough to go all the way around. And I'm just gonna double this off. This probably makes great TV viewing. So I've created a loop there, two sides. I'm just gonna capture that round. And honestly, this can be really loosely done. This is gonna be cut out at the end of the basket. So don't feel that this has to be neat. In fact, I'm gonna go around two weavers because it's a bit quicker. So everyone loves working with thread, don't they? So you're weaving this in between the weavers and the thread? Yeah, what I'm gonna do is twine it. It's a twining technique, so. But it's just gonna hold this central bit of weaving together and through the next sort of process of the weave through the basket. So I'm just gonna go around that one. Let's go around that one. So I'm always taking the back thread and taking it under a weaver. And again, really this, has, this doesn't have to be neat and tidy, it's just a simple thing, just to hold the mat together while we get it in place on our mould. Halfway. I'm not being careful about this at all. I just want it, just want it done. And you'll see the benefits of this. It really does make a difference. So I'm back to the beginning. I'm just going to tie that off, simple knot. Okay, so that's gonna make a real difference when we start folding these corners around, okay? It's gonna stop all this weave trying to un undo itself. So well worth doing, okay? Okay, so we've got our base weave now. Um, this is gonna form all the parts of our basket now I've made a conscious effort to keep all the lighter elements of my basket facing up and I want those all on the outside. So if I put my mould on there and then I fill my basket up, that's going to become the inside. So just to put my mould on, I'm just going to turn my basket over and I'm going to position this. Now I know with six half inch weavers, my mould needs to be two and a quarter inches square around there. Okay, so I've just cut a block of cedar wood from when I've harvested in the past. I've just cut it to two and a quarter inches. Okay, this is a basket I teach a lot, so I have a lot of these moulds lying around. Now, what I'm going to do is just secure that on the base. So I'm going to turn it over with a drawing pin. And I'm going to make sure I draw and pin between the weavers, not through them. So bang in the centre. Just get that in. 
that's going to help us just hold everything in place. Okay, and that's the bottom of our basket. Now I'm going to start on a corner, and what I'm going to do, just push that down more. There we go. I'm going to fold these corners up, and again, just secure them with a drawing pin. Just, just in there. Know, as you get better at this, you know, you don't have to faff around with all this, but just while you're starting, it's a really, really helpful practice. Just stops the basket trying to undo itself. A couple more drawing pins. Just in there and there. I'm making sure I really crease these edges. You can see the basket trying to sort of splay apart, but it can't now because of our threading. Here and there. And then in this one, fold, nice crease. And then that in there. That's sort of held pretty secure. It's going to make everything nice and manageable. So, now we're coming to these corners, okay? This is the real crux of this bias weave. Um, it can feel a little bit odd trying to do it, but once you've got it, you know, it, it's quite a nice, nice way of weaving. So I'm gonna start on one corner. Let's take this one here. I've got two elements coming next to each other. This one has gone over that bit. This one has gone under this bit. So when I cross them over, I want to kind of continue that. So can you kind of see there, this one's gone over, under, over, and then it's going under here. And then the other one's opposite to that. If I did it wrong, like that, this one's essentially going over two elements. Yeah, so that's wrong. So I want to swap those over and get that right. Okay, and then this one is going to come off up at 45 degrees following the weave on the side of the basket. So it needs to, it's gone under this one, so it needs to go over that one. I'm sure there's some old airplane sketch about over and over and <laughs> overdone, but yeah, I saw it the other day, it was very funny. And then it's going under this one. Oh no, I've got that wrong look, see? That's what you get from not paying attention. Right, under that one, over that one, and then under this one. Like so. Then I'm going to come around to this side, so it's this other element here. It's going over there, so it's over that one. So it needs to come under this one. Trapped that corner, we've made that little triangle. Can you see? And there, like that. Now it's really important at this stage just to make sure that these, you see that weaver there is trying to go up, come up at this angle. So you want to force it back down. Okay, and then take the next one up. It's going to go over, and again, it's just following that alternate pattern. Constantly trying to force these weavers round. Fill that one up there. Now, there's full diagrams for how to do this in my book. So, if you want a little slower pace of doing stuff, and that's that corner sort of woven in. Then, what I'm going to do is just move around to this corner here, carry on. I'll just go ahead with this and not chat so much.
There we go, we've kind of got one side of our basket woven in. Do that corner. So that's two corners done, one whole side. Come around to this corner, do the same. Okay, so we've woven in all four corners here and I've woven up the sides as you can see all the way around. Now, now we're going to come to the border and to start that you want to make sure that all the weavers going in one direction are kind of showing to the front. So I've got all the ones going to your right, these ones, they're all at the front if that makes sense. So everything pointing that way is kind of at the front. That's going to mean our basket is all at the same height when we finish it off. Now you can weave the border when it's still on the block but um, I'm just going to make sure I can get my block out because sometimes you weave these things so tight you can't actually get the mould out. So I'm just going to use this is a little custom made tool. It's very uh, high tech. It's an old tent peg which I filed down to like a screwdriver point and it's just quite handy for getting these out and for doing the borders on these little baskets. Let's take all those out, put them out away, and hopefully we can... If you do find your block does get stuck just uh, screw screw into it so you've got something to hold on to and a pair of pliers get a friend to hold your basket okay so now we're going to come on to our border and we're just going to do a simple folded border so it folds back into the weave um, a lot of uh, birch bark baskets of this type they will actually sort of keep these really long and then fold these and weave them back in all the way down the basket to the bottom so you end up with like a double layered basket um, they yeah really really nice very tight weave on them um, can store salt and stuff like that in them we're not going to do that we're just going to leave it on a single skin and just weave these back in so all these elements that are pointing to our right these ones here going to fold down a 45 degree angle which is going to give us a flat top to our basket okay so before I do that I'm just going to snip this end point it because this end's going to be woven back in to the weaving so fold it down like that and it's going to weave into this one here so at the moment the weave is quite loose so no, I'm not going to get that in, so just use my little gimlet, just open that weave up. And just get that in there. Got our end coming through and just pull that. And just pull it so you get a flat surface there. Now the next one is going to be this one here. So I fold that down like so and that's going to fold into here. So I'll point the top. So you're only weaving in the front facing? Absolutely, yeah. The ones sticking out the back, I'm going to trim off at the end. Because once this front row or front set of weavers is woven in, that's the basket's locked off then. It can't undo itself. So the, you can weave the inside ones, the ones at the back in but uh, you don't have to. Okay, so this one is gonna go around here. Now folding around the corners, just be mindful of where you're going. So it folds down like that, it's gonna go under this one. And as you work round, you'll notice the baskets start to kind of tighten up. And it starts to hold together better. Just hold your nerve here, things may start feel like they're coming undone, but just keep going, you'll be fine. This one, let's trim him. So 
So he's going to fold down in there. There we go. So then this one is going to go down. It's going to go in there. So it's just starting to come undone a little bit here. Just want to make sure that I'm in the right spot. You can see this side started to splay open. So I just want to check where I'm going with all this. So that one is there. That needs to come to the front like that. So this one is going to weave down. Before you know it, you will be back to the beginning. This is a lot easier to do when you're not sort of doing it upside down in reverse, which I'm having to do for on the camera. But starting to close it off. And that one needs to go there. So just maintain, making sure we're all, they're all coming off at the same level. So he's going to go down like so. It's come quite undone around this corner. So he's going down there. She's under that one there. And then there, and that one. So I've just finished off that border, um, we've got right back round to the beginning. Um, just the last two that you fold in and weave in, um, they're going to be a little bit tougher than the others. Um, so yeah, just use a little tool just to open the weave so you can get these ones back in. And then it's worth just going around and just making sure everything's all nice and tight. And all these tops are at the same level. So that's quite good, I'm happy with that. Now it's just a case of trimming it off. Um, so I tend to just trim these outside ones just flush with the weave that they came out of. Just going around, just be careful you don't trim, snip off the weaver that they're under. So what are you using, wire cutters? Or? These are Molly's um, swanky um, willow cutters. Right. Um, you don't need these. Um, they have a pair of scissors. These are sort of garden shear type scissors. Work just as well. But yeah, I, I always steal my, my swanky basketry tools. And I tend to just pull the weaver a little bit when I'm doing this and trim it. Then as the basket dries, that cut end will just dry and shrink back under the weaver a little bit. So there we go, that's all the outside ones trimmed off. So we're just left with these uh, inside bits. And this is gonna be a little bit tricky to see. So you can just cut them flush with the top, yeah? Which is fine. Or you can actually cut them, I don't know if you can see down in there, sort of flush with the weave. I don't know how to show you that. So you'd cut down there but I think for this basket, we'll just cut them flush with the top. It's a bit easier to see. And 
again just making sure you're not cutting anything you shouldn't be. And this is a stage in all, making all baskets. Um, quite often a basket can look like a right mess. And then when you trim it and you cut all those access bits off, it's like it sort of emerges um, and that finished form is sort of becomes, becomes apparent to you. It's a really, really nice moment. Um, you know, you've gone through a bit of, maybe a bit of anxiety to get to here, a bit of frustration, but it's well worth it. Um, so now I'm just going to trim out a bit of thread. So just snip that a few spots. So this is the thread you use to hold the base together? Yeah, this comes out. We get rid of that. It can be a little bit of a pig, but... There we go, a finished little basket. So after this, there's nothing else left to do. Would you just let it dry a little bit? Yeah, then... so I would then let it dry fully. Um, because it's gonna have a bit of a rounded bottom, it's gonna sort of wobble around a bit. So what I do as it's drying is I turn it upside down and I'll put a weight, like a heavy stone or something, just on the base there, which will force it to have like a concave bottom. And then that means it's sitting on its four corners when it's uh, dried and it's a lot more stable. So that's a neat little trick. Um, and also once it is fully dried, you've got all these little hairy bits. You might not be able to see them, but there's little tiny little hairs and snag ends and stuff. You can just go round with a lighter and just sort of fizzle those off, obviously being careful not to set light to your basket, but you know, they will, they'll burn down really quick. And it's just a nice way of just neating it up and just kind of sharpens everything up. Um, but yeah, it's a bias weave is a great little technique to learn. It's all about these corners, these diagonal corners. You nail that, you're there. Um, and it's a very transferable sort of style of basket. You know, you can make this out of sweet chestnut bark, um, you know, cedar bark, birch bark, um, the palm leaves. You know, it's a really, really transferable sort of basket design. So um, yeah, give it a go. So Nick, before we properly wrap up, uh, I've mentioned the ebook at the beginning of the video, mm. and do you want to talk a little bit about it and kind of what it entails? Yeah, so it's uh, something I've wanted to do for a while. Um, it, it's kind of a compendium of all my knowledge that I've gathered over the last sort of 18 years of weaving cedar bark. Um, I've tried to put all the little nuggets of special cool little information that really help. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be available as a downloadable PDF off, our, off the Macmillan Art website. Um, and it's all sort of ready in print format. So you can take that PDF to printers and just say go and it will come out like this. Um, so we, we kind of start with a little introduction about bark um, and then it goes through, you know, where you're gonna find your cedar, harvesting it, you know, the things we talked about in the video about sort of harvesting in England as opposed to where it grows as a native tree and the, the issues around that. And then moving on through um, sort of preparing the bark to get ready to store it, then for weaving. And then we also go into uh, how to make folded baskets in this uh, one type of folded basket. Um, how I um, dye the bark uh, to get that nice black color and then uh, something in there about roots as well, because uh, the cedar roots are beautiful material to use, incredibly tough and great binding material. Um, and then we've got three projects, um, the bias weave that we've done in the video, um, what I call a stake and strand, um, which is a, a sort of a few different techniques, and then the folded canoe baler basket. What I've tried to do, do with the three um, baskets is, the, the sort of touching on very different techniques in each one. So, you know, by doing all these three projects, you're sort of learning 
uh, a, a sort of broad range of techniques that you can then you know take to using willow bark or chestnut bark or elm bark or you know all those different sort of fibers that we can weave so yeah it's um, yeah good little resource of techniques there so and then it's just full of all my illustrations pen and ink illustrations that I've been doing um, sort of instructional drawings if I can find some here you know preparing roots here digging them up stripping them splitting them and we go on to weaving bias weave basket that we've just done um, that corner how to weave that corner um, then finishing off the rim so yeah and sort of culminating in that's that's the other one and then we've got the folded cedar like the canoe baler just binding techniques and then yeah so yeah uh, just hope people enjoy really um, it's been, it's been a real pleasure to kind of put it together. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Nick, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute trooper. It's not easy <laughs> trying to demonstrate things when there's a camera right in your face, but you've done really well. I learned a lot as well cool. by seeing your process. So I really do appreciate you taking the time to share that. That's a pleasure. Um, so guys, just a final recap. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, this video is the final video of a three-part series on cedar bark basketry. The links to the previous videos will be down below in the description. Also, as I mentioned before, uh, Nick has recently, at the time of uh, us actually recording today this video, he's just published his comprehensive ebook on cedar bark basketry. He's done all his own custom illustrations and he expands on everything we said a lot deeper, a lot further, as well as touching on other topics that we didn't have time to do in the three part series. So there is a link down below to that ebook and it's a great way of uh, also supporting Nick's work and also a way of saying thank you for him taking the time to kind of share, no, share kind his of knowledge. Um, finally, as I've also mentioned, there is a link below to Nick's social media uh, and website. On the website, you can find out a lot more information about uh, the projects he's working on, the courses that you teach, but you teach it as a course, don't you, as a standalone? Yeah, the, um, the courses are on Molly's uh, website but right. there you can follow links through my Instagram on the link tree there okay and that'll that'll take you to the courses we've got a lot of basketry courses um, uh, I teach bow making as well so yeah you'll find all that through the link tree on the Macmillan art website perfect yeah. so all links to that will be down below and finally if you get any value from this video and all this series whatsoever, it will mean the world to me. You head over to Nick's Instagram and give him a follow. Um, as a final parting word, what I would I be right in saying, obviously, this, this three part series is about opening people up to a different skill set, about mm. a different way of doing things, mm. and utilizing material, especially here in the UK, sure. where I don't believe it's as common, sure. um, to kind of like uh, utilize the material that that's about mm. in terms of cedar, because it has a lot of history to it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, look into um, sort of cedar weaving online. Um, you know, it's a fantastic culture that they've developed. Um, and yeah, amazing skills and a really lovely material to work with. Excellent. And yeah. um, once again, I really do appreciate you taking the time to record this and also for showing me around and allowing me to document <laughs> uh, the workshop. He's got so many beautiful craft here. Uh, so if I've done a video on this alone, it'll take like an hour. You know, he's got some amazing stuff. So once again, I do thank you. Guys, I really okay. do appreciate you watching up until now. Hope you're getting a lot of value from this. Links to everything in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed this entire series. So as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zeph from Zell Outdoors and Nick McMillan. Peace out. Cheers.